In this video, we'll discuss volumes of solids with known cross sections. And what this means is we'll have some bounded region. Here, I've bounded it by three different uh, equations, uh, I guess by three different uh, uh, curves or lines. One is the equation y equals, or f of x equals two sine x plus three. One is the vertical line x equals two pi. And then there's the x-axis. So I'm gonna graph um, 2 sine x plus 3. So there's 3 and 5. Uh, we start at 3. Let's say that's 2 pi. It will end up back at 3 at 2 pi. You can substitute x equals 2 pi to find out uh, where I got that point from. And uh, it's going to go up to five, back to three, down to one. This will be a three pi over two. Doesn't really matter. Um, in any case, I will get a curve like that. So that's one of our uh, ways of bounding it. Another one is the x-axis. So the x-axis is, of course, here. And then x equals two pi, which is a vertical line this way, so we have a bound there. Um, oh, I guess we should also bound it with the, put the y-axis in here as well. So that'll bound it on the left side, and then our sine wave. So it's everything inside that red region. So uh, by what I call this thing volumes of solids of known cross sections, or I'm referring to that in any case. Uh, first, these four items are going to bound the base of the object. So think of this as the bottom of the object. From those, or, or using that as the bottom, there's a surface that's going to pop out directly toward you. Um, and that surface, if you were to slice this three-dimensional object perpendicular to the x-axis, every time you slice it, you get a square. So the, one of the hardest part about, parts about these is envisioning them. Um, it's like every little slice here involves a square that's kind of popping out toward you. So hopefully you can see the thing I'm talking about. I have a little visual, a large visual aid here for you. It's this object. So this is the graph and I'm spinning it so that you can get some idea of what the object is. You can notice how tall it is. Um, and I've specified that every time you cut it, it's a square. And you might say, well, what size is the square? Well, if I take a square out of here and I write it on the two-dimensional plane of the board, one thing that you'll notice is the only thing that determines that square is the, the height of the function or the distance from the x-axis to uh, the top of the function. So this thing's the height, and that's measured by 2 sine x plus 3. Or you can think of it for now as just measuring the y value. So however tall that y value is, that's also the other dimension of the square. So the area of this square is y squared, which is also known as 2 sine x plus 3 squared. So what we're going to do then uh, to find the volume of this is we're going to integrate that area function from the leftmost point, which is uh, x equals 0, to the rightmost point of x equals 2 pi. So we'll take the, the, the big deal here is the volume is equal to the integral of the area function. And what this dx is, you can think of the dx as the thickness of each slice. And you can see here in the big visual A, there is some thickness to this. All right, this is made out of that poster board type material. And so if you were to slice it thinner, you would get a better and better approximation of the actual volume. So uh, we're going to integrate it. And then you integrate it. Well, it depends on the problem. But in this problem, we're going to integrate from 0 to 2 pi. So here we'll have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 
the 2 sine x plus 3 function squared. And again, the dx represents the thickness of each slice. From here, it's just an integral question. Uh, I'll do some of the mechanics for you, and um, you'll multiply the thing out. So it'll be 4 sine squared x plus 12 sine x plus 9. Uh, that's just doing some simple multiplication. Uh, this term's really easy to integrate. It's just um, the integral of sine function, which is negative cosine. This term's really easy to integrate. It's just 9x. This guy's a little harder, though. Uh, so you may recall that the sine of x function, um, sine squared of x, sorry, shows up in the cosine squared. Uh, well, that's true. It shows up in the cosine of 2x angle identity. So the identity there is 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. And we can isolate in this thing, we can isolate sine squared. So it'll be um, sine squared of x is 1 minus cos 2x over 2. So we replace our integral with 0 to 2 pi of 1 minus, well, I'll write it slightly differently. I'll write this as 1 half and cos 2x over 2 plus 12 sine x plus 9. And I'll leave it to you to go from there. Uh, you might want to use u substitution on here. You might be able to just do it mentally. We've already talked through these, and the integral of a half is just x. And then you'll plug in the uh, top and bottom limits. The result you should get, uh, oh, I forgot to calculate it. That's OK. Um, just in, I think it's 24 pi, I'm pretty sure. So uh, I'll leave it to, to you to verify the result, though. Um, the most important part, though, is deciding the area of each cross section. After you get an image in your head, you decide the area of each cross section. And this guy is going to be the big takeaway here. We integrate the thing. Uh, we integrate the area function dx in this case because the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. If we were to slice it horizontally or perpendicular to the y-axis, we won't integrate dx. It'll be an area function of y dy. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this and offer a different problem. So this one's going to be more simply bounded. x squared plus y squared equals 1, better known as the unit circle center origin. So I'll make a pretty picture. OK, we'll, we'll start by taking cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis as squares, just like before. So cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares again. Uh, so what that means is, again, coming out here, I'll draw them in red, are kind of squares that pop out of the whiteboard toward your viewing eye. So that's the image. And it looks something like this thing, where the squares pop out to you. Looks like this one's kind of fallen by accident, but you get the picture. OK, so we'll set that one up. And, and um, first, you're going to need to isolate y. So if you isolate y in this equation, you'll have the square root of 1 minus x squared. That's just the top half of the y function. So that's just this thing. Now, if you take one of these squares and you examine that square, I'm drawing it kind of 2D again. Its height isn't just y this time. Its height is 2y because we're going above and below the axis. So from here to here, that height would be y. So that's referring to like the top half of the square. So from here to here, the height's y. 
But now, if we're incorporating everything together that makes up the square, we have a length of 2i. Uh, thus, the area of the square is 2y squared, also known as 4y squared. And the slices are perpendicular to the x-axis, so we want to integrate the x, and you might say, but you wrote the function of area in terms of y. But remember, you can go back here and find out what y is. In this case, y is the square root of 1 minus x. So when you square that, 1 minus x squared, sorry. When you square that, you get 4 1 minus x squareds. So now that's our area function. So we would do the integral of the area. And we have to decide from what to what. So you examine the circle. And the circle's leftmost point here is negative 1 comma 0. So we're going to integrate from negative 1 to 1 um, of the 4 1 minus x squared function. And from here, I'll leave it to you to calculate. Uh, if you're not comfortable the way it looks, distribute the 4 in and then integrate each term. Okay, so now I'm going to take the same problem and give it a little twist. Um, I'm going to get rid of these calculations though. So now let's take the same thing and make this, make the cross sections. This time are now um, triangles. Okay, and let's make them equilateral. Okay, I don't have a, a, a physical visual aid to show you. I can show you a, an image of this in a second. But effectively what that does is it says whatever the distance from here to here is, that length becomes all three sides of a triangle where the triangle pops out at your face. So it kind of looks a little bit like this. So a little bit like, uh, I don't know, sort of like a soccer player's faux hawk kind of haircut. I'll show you an image like that one. OK, um, the image I showed you was twisted 90 degrees, but I think you can see what it is from here. So what we need to do then is we see that uh, this triangle, I'm going to redraw the equilateral triangle from here to here. The measurement is the height of the function, also known as a y value, times 2, because there's a y here and an extra y here. So that's 2y. Now I'm going to draw it even bigger. Now we need to find the area of this, knowing just that it's 2y and that it's an equilateral triangle. So we can split this in half, and thus each piece here is y and y. That's 90, 60, 30. So if the side opposite y, or side opposite 30 degrees is y, then this one's 2y. But we already knew that because it was equilateral. The more important one is the sort of height or this, the measurement across the triangle, the altitude. And that's going to be root 3 times y. That's going to be the measurement of the height of the triangle. So the area of a triangle is 1 half base height. So we know the base is y, sorry, 2y, 2y, or this is, could be viewed as a base. And then the height will be root 3 of y. So the overall area function will equal uh, root 3 y squared. And that's because these 2's cancel. So that's our area. And again, going back to the problem, we are slicing perpendicular to the x-axis, so we want to integrate uh, dx. So we're going to integrate the area function. Our left point is negative 1, and our right point is 1 because it's a circle. So uh, we've got to look at this and decide what y is. But if you go back to the definition of y or the definition of the function, um, You'll see that this is root 3 times whatever y squared is. Now, what I did in the previous problem was I plugged y in, and then I squared this item. 
But if you go to the, to the uh, blue equation up here, you'll see that y squared is simply 1 minus x squared. So we don't have to plug in the root just to square it. Later, uh, this, uh, the y value here, y squared, can be wholly replaced by 1 minus x squared. So then when we're integrating, I'll just distribute this in. It'll be root 3 minus root 3 x squared dx from negative 1 to 1. And now it's set up where I'm a little bit worried you can't see all of this. Uh, now it's set up where you can um, do the integral of each of these terms, and the integration shouldn't be the hard part. I'd say hard part number one is envisioning the object. Hard part number two is grabbing one of the cross sections, putting it in a 2D representation, and then calculating the area from that. From there, you just integrate the area. So hopefully the big takeaway here is that you integrate whatever the area function is, dx. This is if the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. And then you can also do it with area as a function of y, dy. Um, and we can do this with varying base shapes as we've done and with varying cross section shapes. We did two of them with squares, one of them with an equilateral triangle. We could do semicircles where if the cross section of this was a semicircle, what would it, it would effectively create is a hemisphere, right? Or if you do both sides of it, you'd get a sphere, and you should be able to, from that idea, establish the volume of a sphere. Uh, so that would be volumes of cross section, uh, volumes of solids with known cross sections.